So you're either here because you have a really high idle, a low idle, a rough idle, or the bike won't idle at all. And in today's video, we're gonna go over and fix all those problems. So before we can get into fixing any of your idling issues, there's gonna be three main things we need to make sure are done and ready to go so we can actually set the idle up correctly. Now, the first thing is you need to make sure that the bike is fully warmed up. This thing can't be cold. Go ahead, let this thing get hot and hurdy and ready to rock and roll. The second thing is you're gonna need to make sure that the choke is in the off position. And then the third thing is, is that if you need to still tune your carb in any way, if the fueling still isn't quite right, maybe you have a little bit of a bog left in your bike, anything like that, go ahead and tune the carb first before we get into setting the idle. So if you have any slight hesitation or bog or anything like that, you're gonna wanna make sure you go and tune the carb first before we set the idle. Otherwise, you're gonna set the idle, tune the carb, then have to set the idle once again. So make sure you tune the carb first. So now I'm gonna answer the questions that you don't even know that you have. So how long should I let the bike warm up for before we set the idle? You should let it sit and warm up for at least one to three minutes. That's enough time to give the piston and the head time to expand and to get good oil circulation throughout the head of the engine. Now why does the choke need to be turned off before we start that? Because the choke changes the airflow that actually goes into the carb and that's going to change your idle. As you know you turn the choke on when you're doing a cold start that's because it increases the idle. So when we're setting the idle we want to make sure that the choke is set off. Now another question you might have is why does my bike stall at idle when it's hot? First reason might be that your idle is just set too low. Another cause might be your air fuel mixture being too lean meaning you don't have enough fuel in the mixture and other possibilities could range from low compression, bad valve clearances, or leaking intake boots or lines. Now to remedy this, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and adjust your fuel screw. Start with like eighth of a turns at a time, and that'll add just a little bit of fuel to your mixture to hopefully not have the bike stall out. Or possibly you'll have to upsize your idle jet size, which will also increase the fuel. The idle jet is what controls the fuel at idle. So changing the size of the jetting is gonna change how much fuel is being delivered at an idle. Now, some of you might be asking, why does my bike rev so high when it's cold? Now, if you can't lower your idle enough with just the idle screw, it could be that the fuel mixture itself is the issue. Now, you could have too much fuel combined with a possible air leak, and that's gonna increase your RPM, which is gonna give you a higher idle, as if you were on throttle. Now to remedy this, you might need to go into the fuel screw, lower the fuel, and that should help bring it down and replace any air intake boots or any lines that you have that are vacuums uh, so that you know you have the right amount of air with the right amount of fuel being mixed in. Now some of you might be asking, why does my bike run really rough then if I've checked all my fuel components? Well, it is possible that you have weak spark and when you have weak spark, you're having fuel that's going unburnt inside your engine, which is gonna make it run rough. Now weak spark can be caused by a whole bunch of different things. So let's go ahead and start with the plug itself. Now, if you have a foul plug and your plug is like completely black, just go ahead and replace it. And then you're probably gonna wanna adjust your tune because if it's black, it's got too much fuel. So we're gonna turn that fuel screw down or possibly you just have an old spark plug in your bike that you haven't pulled out. Maybe it's a couple years old and it's time to just put a new one in. Now, assuming that the plug itself is not the issue, the next thing we're gonna go up to is the coil boot. Now, there could be a possible break in the wire or some corrosion inside of the boot, which is causing to have a bad electrical connection. And then if you're riding in any mud or water to check for any moisture they got inside of the boot, that could corrode on the spark plug, which causing a bad connection to have bad spark. Now let's say you've replaced your spark plug, you replace the boot, what's left is gonna be your ignition coil. Now the ignition coil is located at the opposite end of the boot plug, and on some bikes it is a part of the wire itself. So what does the ignition coil do? The ignition coil turns a low voltage into a high voltage, and while well, you guessed it, if it's not amplifying the voltage, you're gonna have weak spark because it's not turning that low voltage into high voltage. So if you've replaced both the boot and the plug, it's time to replace your ignition coil. Now, another thing that could cause weak spark is incorrect ignition timing. Now for your bike, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and make sure you check your own service manual as every bike's a little bit different on the ignition timing. But you're gonna to wanna to make sure that's set correctly or you're gonna have poor spark as well. And it is equally important to make sure you check all of the air filter components on the bike. Having a dirty air filter or a really bad air filter that's sucking in a whole bunch of dirt isn't gonna help. If you pull dirt into the engine, into the cylinder, and you scratch up the cylinder walls, that's gonna lower your compression, which can result in a poor idle. So now that we know all the reasons why our bike might not idle, let's go ahead and let's set the idle on a dirt bike. So the very first thing you wanna do, go ahead, start your bike up, get this thing ready and hot and hurdy. Now let's say this bike is nice and hot, it's ready to rock and roll. The next thing we're gonna do is come over and we're gonna make sure that the carburetor choke is turned in the off position. Then you're gonna come over to your idle screw here and we're gonna adjust this in eighth of turns. Now, when you adjust the idle, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and listen to it. If you hear it going down really low and kind of bog and it skips, or skips, or skips, or skips, or skips, or skips, it's a little too low, raise it up a little higher. Now, if it's fully high and it's just 
accent and, and doesn't have any irregularity to it, turn it down just a little bit. You're gonna wanna listen for that sweet spot in between the and and somewhere in between where it has a little bit of hesitation and that's somewhere right in the right setting of your idle. Now it's really easy, you can always go over and just give it eighth of a turn adjustments quickly, no problem. So it's not a big deal if you don't get it perfectly set the first time. Go out, give it a ride, give it a shot, learn how to do it, tinker with it, just adjust it slightly and see where it sounds the perfect. And I'll show you a little bit of an example cue here on screen of what it should look like on in an audible visual manner. Now if this video has helped you guys out at all, make sure you guys leave a like, comment down below, click subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.